So with the recent release of Ubuntu 14.04, we're now going to take a quick look at all of the rest of the Ubuntu family, starting out with probably the most feature rich in comparison to the Ubuntu Unity desktop, and that is of course Kubuntu, based on the KDE Plasma desktop. Now, with the recent release of KDE Plasma Desktop 4.13, there's quite a few features and improvements that come with this, this iteration of the KDE desktop. And probably the biggest improvement with KDE 4.13 is the KDE Semantic Search. Now, basically, this helps you find files, applications much quicker and also is more stable and uses less resources than the previous iterations of KDE searching. So any improvement that helps KDE manage its system resources more effectively and definitely search is one of those things that has definitely taken up space in the past is a big improvement in my opinion. Now some of the other changes that they've also made include a new network manager on the bottom panel here. You can see here they've improved this widget quite a bit. It helps you connect and manage your network connections by presenting you with a list of available networks down here and then all of those toggles that we're used to seeing on smartphones and tablets to help you manage things like airplane mode, turning your Wi-Fi on and off and all your data if you have it. They also have a new driver manager which helps you pull in drivers for your wireless card or for your graphics card and gives you the option of using either the proprietary software or the open source software depending on your stance. It's much more effective and it looks a bit more at home in KDE than the previous releases where they used the Jockey QT app. Another improvement that was made is that Gwenview supports installation of plugins from the application itself as, in, as opposed to having to dig through the package manager to find those plugins. And once you've installed those plugins, they will help you connect with web services like Flickr and Facebook to help you share and populate the online spaces that you might have with the photos that you edit or manage in Gwenview. The instant messaging service known as Telepathy has also undergone a little bit of work to help it integrate with multiple online accounts. So now if you have multiple accounts and say you have duplicates of different people in those different accounts, they will now show up under the one name. So if you know a person, John Smith, and you chat to him both on Facebook and on Google+, then they will both show up here under the one entry and give you the option of choosing which account to contact him on. A new touchpad configuration tool is also available for those who use laptops and touchpads and as I am using this inside a virtual machine I do not have the synaptic drivers installed so therefore I can't move any of this stuff around. But if you are using a laptop and you are using the synaptic drivers which it will automatically figure out if you need them or not then you can customize what goes on here with your touchpad. It gives you a lot more flexibility and it also gives you a bit of a testing area to see what preferences you prefer when managing your touchpad. So a nice addition there. KDE's notifications will also notify you if you do need to pull in extra software to help play your music or to manage your, maybe to manage your hardware better such as better drivers or whether there are networks available. And one of the other nice things that they have done with KDE is they've added in this app called KDE Connect. Now KDE Connect is available in the software store, which by the way, has undergone a little bit of work as well. Muon Discover now has a nice user interface to it. And as you can see here, one of the banners that they have is for KDE Connect. KDE Connect is essentially a little piece of software that helps connect your Android smartphone to your desktop so you can manage its notifications and manage things like text messaging and when you have a call incoming from your desktop. So you don't actually have to pick up your phone until you actually have to uh, physically pick up and answer a call. Also, one of the nice little tweaks that it does do is when it does have an incoming call, it will automatically dip the music for you so you don't have to go panicking around your office trying to shut the music up that you have. Now, Muon Discover manages your updates, your software sources, and of course, installing software itself. And it's actually remarkably snappy compared to a lot of the software centers that are out there. So it's a good addition to the KDE software management suite. And also these nice little fading transitions are a nice touch. Now, while I will say that the Spartan layout of the Muon Discover software manager isn't exactly the most pretty, it will have to do for the time being, and I can only hope they will continue to improve this software center as the Ubuntu software center hasn't seen any work in ages.
when it comes to aesthetics. Firefox is also the new default web browser for the Kubuntu release, and this is essentially a much more standards compliant web browser that we've seen on multiple platforms rather than Reconk, which was specific to KDE and not always the most stable or reliable web browser. As this is a long-term support release, you will receive five years of support from Canonical, and so it only makes sense to have a more standard and stable web browser in Kubuntu by default. As far as system resources go, Kubuntu isn't exactly going to be your go-to distribution if you have a system that is light on when it comes to RAM or CPU power. As you can see, I'm using about 0.65 gig of the 2 gig that I've assigned this virtual machine and I'm churning through between 10 and 15% of a dual core CPU. Now it's not too big of a deal if you've got modern hardware that was made anywhere, anywhere in the last five years, but if you're looking at a computer that's older than that, then you are probably better served elsewhere, as KDE, as a general rule, is pretty heavy on the resources. Now as you can see, unfortunately I have come across a few app crashes and bugs in Kubuntu, which is a bit of a surprise compared to the stability of the last release cycle. And unfortunately that is just something that I've come to accept with KDE. Nine times out of ten, you are going to have app crashes. And while it is really unacceptable in today's day and age to have that kind of thing, it is disappointing to see in a long-term support release. So at the end of the day, who do I recommend Kubuntu for? Well, if you're used to a traditional desktop user paradigm, you have modern hardware and you'd like to be able to customize your workflow and your software to the way that you work, I definitely recommend Kubuntu as it'll give you a lot more flexibility than the Unity desktop from Canonical itself. And it will also give you plenty of features and toys to play around with that the lighter distributions such as Ubuntu or Lubuntu offer. It has a relatively complete software selection out of the box and any software deficiencies can quickly be made up from the Muon Discover Software Center. And while it is a little heavier on performance and a little heavier on boot time and also a little more unstable when it comes to app crashes, with five years support of updates this distribution will stabilize out and I can guarantee a stable experience within a, within a few months. Of course, let me know what you think about Kubuntu's latest release in the comments section below. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you like this stuff on a regular basis, then definitely subscribe. I will see you all in the very near future with the rest of the Ubuntu family, including Ubuntu Studio this year. And with that, I shall say peace out, ladies and gentlemen.